take you on a journey in the next few moments. And I think you're going to find this extremely interesting. Genesis chapter 1, 1 and 2. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. In a moment, I'm going to tell you about the gap theory. Genesis 1-1, God created the heavens and the earth. The word created is the Hebrew word bara, which means to make complete. It actually is a word indicating that when God made the heavens and the earth, He made the heavens and the earth in a completed form. Now, what's interesting is you come to verse 2, and here's what you read. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Finnis Date points out that in Hebrew it reads, And the earth became void and empty, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now, years ago when I studied this, I saw something. Because the word deep in Hebrew is the word tehom. And it alludes to the underground chambers that are underneath the crust of the earth, especially the area where the aquifers and the water systems are, but it's underground. And I said to myself, all right, if God made everything perfect, what happened between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2? Let me give you something to think about. Do you know in verse 3 what it says? God said, let there be light, and there was light. Do you know what most of you assume? That that was the sun, moon, and stars right there. No, sir. The sun, moon, and stars reappear on day four. Read your story. Who is the light of Genesis 1-3? John 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God, all things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made which is made in Him was life, and this life was the light of men. Now watch this. That's all creation. He's talking there not about Jesus being born through Mary. He's talking about creation. And the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Watch this. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That's Genesis 1-3 found in John chapter 1. The light was the early light of creation of God's glory that was over the earth. Now, I am of the opinion, because if you go to Isaiah chapter 14, Satan says, I'll exalt my throne above the stars of God in the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north in heaven. Satan had a throne on earth. When did he have the throne on earth? You understand when he said that, he wasn't fallen yet. When he said that, he'd not been kicked out of heaven yet. And yet he was on earth somewhere with a throne. Now the Luke says, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. That's what Jesus said. When did Satan fall from heaven? Ezekiel 28 tells you he was the anointed cherub. Every stone was his covering, like a breastplate of the priest. He had nine stones on a gold breastplate. That's in your Bible. He was created with tablets and pipes. He could sing. He walked up and down in the midst, watch this, of the stones of fire. And God said, you have been in Eden, the garden of God. And when you look at his description, and you go read the book of Genesis about the garden of Eden, he don't look like that, he's a snake. Genesis 3, the serpent shows up, and the New Testament tells you it's Satan. So who's this creature in Ezekiel 28? Every precious stone is your covering. The pipes and tablets are pre prepared in you. You are walking up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. I'm going somewhere with this. You're walking on them. Who's he talking about? He's talking about Satan before he fell. You have been in Eden, the garden of God. What Eden? You ready for this? I'm just going to blow you away from the beginning. The Eden that Satan ruled from before he fell. Why? Now we're going to get weird here for a minute. I'll just confess it. My boy wants to know, Dad, why on Mars do you have a book that has pictures from NASA of pyramids on Mars? They exist. He, Robbie knows. Why do you have what looks like the Sphinx called the monkey face on the planet Mars? I said, son, because you've got to understand principalities and powers 
rule and walk and move and fly in that atmosphere out there. Second heaven, prince of the power of the air, Ephesians 2 and 2. And I says, I don't know what they can do on planets. I know if they can transport from here to there, they don't have to breathe the way we do. They have a different kind of a body. Celestial body, terrestrial body. Angels are different. But I said, I want to tell you that according to the scripture, when you sum it up, there was a kingdom on earth in Genesis 1, 1, ruled by angels. I'll prove it to you in a minute. What happened? Here's what happened. Between 1-1, one, one, everything is perfect. 1-2, the earth is void. Darkness is upon the face of the deep. And darkness is settled on the earth because Lucifer has led a rebellion. And according to Revelation 13, goes before the throne of God, Ezekiel 28, tries to overthrow God, takes one-third of the angels and gets expelled out of heaven. And is cast out to the earth. And that old dragon is cast out and his angels were cast out with him. Two-thirds of the angels remained in heaven. One-third fell. And suddenly God does something on earth that starts making sense as to why everything is void and empty. And here's what God begins to do. Here's what it says. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things that do appear. The word framed appears in the New Testament Greek in two places. It is used in Ephesians 2.21 which means to fit or join together to frame a building Hebrews 11 and 3 where it says the world is was the world were framed by the Word of God is a Greek word that is totally different from that word in the book of Ephesians it means I quote to repair to restore back again by faith we understand that the worlds were restored back again by the Lord my friend, here's the bottom line. Satan fell from heaven. Satan's kingdom he had on earth ruled with angels was overthrown and destroyed by God between Genesis 1, 1 and 1, 2. Why is it important for you to understand that? Because when you understand that science says that this earth is four million years of age and you put a kid in a classroom where a scientist is saying that and the kid turns and says, but sir, it's only 6,000 years old. The kid becomes a laughing stock. But when that kid, my own nephew called me and I spent 30 minutes explaining this on the phone. He said, Perry, you just helped me because I was doubting the creation story. I said, Genesis 1. One, one may have been four million years ago. We do not know how long God made the heavens. We do not know how long ago he created the original earth. And we do not know how long angels ruled before Satan fell. All we, we have the story now. All the time is taken out. There's no time given us. But I'm telling you, this planet existed and God destroyed it by a flood, which is recorded in the book of Jeremiah. And he wiped everything out. And there's something else God did. And here's the next verse you need to understand. And that's why... Ooh, darkness is upon the face of the deep. That's why there's water all over the earth. Then, then shall he say unto them on his left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. Scientists are always saying, the earth at one time was hot. All of a sudden water appeared and the earth cooled down. And then the grass appeared and the trees appeared. Now we look at that and say, no, 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 that's not what happened. Got news for you. They're right. That's what happened. Because what happened is God put hell in the center of this earth between Genesis 1 and 2. The whole place was chaotic. When he starts messing with the earth, it gets out of shape without form and void. They and dark, then light appears, the light of his glory, and God said, light be and light was, trees be and trees were, grass appear, and in six actual literal days, God put this thing all back together and reframed it again. Is this helping anybody understand something? Raise your hands if this is helping you understand something. Now, that's why you have water in verse 2 covering the earth. Hell is made, God is cooling this planet down to recreate it. Then when God speaks after everything, He separates the water. The, crea the creation process could literally be six days the way it's literally spoken in the Word of God. I hope somebody's hearing what I'm saying right now. There is a theory called the gap theory, and there's two kinds of people that deal with the gap theory. Those that dismiss it as nonsense, 
or those that misapply it. We're going to try to do neither. You're going to do, all I want to do is understand, help you understand why some of us hold the view that there's an interval before, before, in between the first two verses of the book of Genesis. Okay? Now, some, when were the angels created? When did Satan fall? Is there a gap? In, that's the issues before us this, in this hour. Let's look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, period. If you accept that statement, you will have absolutely no problem with any other verse in the Bible. That says it all. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, period. Done deal. No contest. The next verse says, And the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let light be. And there was light. And God saw the light and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were day one. Now we could spend a lot. We spend a whole hour on this in our Genesis commentary. I'll spare you all that. But I want to focus our attention on that second verse. Because it's translation isn't precise. And there, this is one of those times when precision may be our rescue here. It says, And the earth was without form and void. When we get to Isaiah, we find a strange phrase here. In verse 18 of 44, God says, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain. That seems to contradict Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. The earth was without form and void. But God says, I didn't create it. You know, tohu. Tohu for bohu. Without form and void. He did create it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. There would seem to be a contradiction between Isaiah 45, 18 and Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. Now, whenever you find an apparent contradiction in the Bible, rejoice. Because behind that will lie a discovery. It's what a, a rabbi would call a remez, a hint of something deeper. Let's look further. When we get to Jeremiah, we find some strange descriptions here that don't seem to... They, they, they're provocative. Jeremiah chapter 4, starting about verse 23. He says, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void. Really? And the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. Again, the word toho without form is here. Toho vubohu. Those two words that occur in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. Jeremiah continues, I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord by his fierce anger. And thus hath the Lord said, The whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. Gee, what's going on here? A judgment of some kind. Why isn't he making a full end? He must have some plan in mind. Well, let's go back here. and Let's take a look at Psalm 18 as we poke around the Scripture a little bit. It says, Then the earth shook and trembled, and the foundations of the hills were moved and were shaken because he was wroth. And there went up a smoke out of his nostrils and a fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion was round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of skies. And the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them. He shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Then the channels of the waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of thy nostrils. Sounds like a cosmic judgment of some kind. Great. When did it happen? What historical event explains this? Or is it just flowery language is a poet getting carried away here? Well, let's take a closer look at verse 2 of Genesis and see if it holds the key to this riddle. The way it reads in your Bible likely is, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. The word was turns out to be a transitive verb requiring action. It's the same verb that in Genesis chapter 19, verse 26, is used when Lot's wife became 
a pillar of salt. It's a transitive verb requiring action. The earth became without form and void. Haya, had become. In fact, because of the word order and the structure, it's the pluperfect form. It had become without form and void. Now, without form, tohu, without form, confused, void, bohu, void, empty, waste, without form and void, tohu vabohu. Furthermore, there's this and up front. It's a vav, it's a conjunction, like and, except it turns out to be what we call an adversative conjunction, meaning it's not and, it's but. The vav conjunction, it's adversative. Both the Septuagint, the Greek translation 900 years before the Masoretic, and also the Latin Vulgate, both translate that as but in the English, equivalent to the but in the English. And by the way, that adversative conjunction often suggests a time delay. In Exodus 2, it is an eight-year period. In Deuteronomy 10, it represents a 38-year period. In 1 Chronicles 10, it's a seven-year period. In Ezekiel 6, it's a 58-year period. It's an adversative, but it implies a delay of some kind. So it's the way this gets translated properly is, but the earth had become without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Something happened between verse 1 and verse 2. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, period. But the earth had become without form and void. And the Scripture is not silent about events that apparently fit into that interval, into that gap. And uh, we find this uh, Tohu Bohu thing always used as an aftermath of judgment. Isaiah 34, Isaiah 45 that we looked at, Jer uh, Jeremiah 4 that we looked at. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. That isn't darkness like the absence of light. That's an unnatural darkness. It's called Kosek. It's in Exodus 10. In, upon the face of the deep, Dihom. In the Greek, it's the abuso, the abyss. That's the home of the demons and the evil spirits. Well, now, wait a minute here. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Fabulous. Something happened that the earth became without form and void. And now darkness on the face of the deep. And one of the hypotheses we want to explore, possibly this explains the judgment on a prior situation that was the judgment on a usurper. So the gap theory, this I, thing I'm going to suggest to you was first suggested as near as we can tell by Thomas Chalmers in 1814. And you'll find books written about it. Perhaps the classic on this subject is George Pember's book, Earth's Earliest Ages published in London in 1907. It's readily available in most bookstores. Donald Gray Barnhouse, The Invisible War, is one of my must-reads in my library. Fabulous, fabulous book on this whole subject. And Arthur uh, Custance, Without Form and Void, published in 70, and there's been others. 